Hey everyone, today I'm rounding out a trilogy of videos by showcasing every ally weapon in Kingdom Hearts 3. Let's start with Donald's staves, or staffs if you prefer. His most basic staff, the Mage's Staff, returns once again from previous games. However, this time there's also an upgraded version, the Mage's Staff Plus. Donald and Goofy have a normal and plus version for each of their 7 weapons, which means 14 staves and 14 shields in total. For the showcase today, I'll be presenting them in their pairs like this. So let's run through the staff stats. First is the Strength and Magic stat. This is plus 3, plus 4 for both major staffs. Then we have the Ability. Every plus staff has at least one of these, in this case Fire Boost, that's adding 20% more fire damage. And next is the Source. The major staff is Donald's default weapon, and the plus version comes from a chest and toy box in the Babies and Toddlers section. Finally, there's the sell price. Only non-unique staves and shields can be sold. That is, ones you buy from the shop, or you can synthesize multiples of. The others cannot be sold and will be shown with an X. The Major Staff is an updated version of what we've seen already in Cage 1 and 2. It's got the Final Fantasy black mage hat and Donald's clothing. The plus version is red, which is actually a callback to Cage 1's Major Staff. I neglected to do this in the previous two videos, so this time I decided to go a bit further and show the weapon hit effects. Donald and Goofy can't be controlled to hit cleanly like I could do with the Keyblades, but this should be enough. The Major Staff hit effect features expanding and rotating circles. The effect colours generally complement the colours of the weapon itself. Next up, another returning weapon, the Warhammer. It's named after the Cage 1 weapon, but modelled after the Hammer Staff from Cage 2, although it's more orange than red this time. It's the same idea of a strength-based staff, for when Donald's feeling extra feral. You can buy the base Warhammer for 400 money, and the plus version requires synthesis. It has the item boost ability, which increases the potency of recovery items. Since the Warhammer is more physical, its hit effect is simple, a pair of interlocking arcs, forming a kind of whirl. The Magician's Wand is a strange thing, a staff being named Wand, doing real magic, but designed after fake trick magic. Well, it's fully into that style, with cards, a bow tie, a top hat, and of course the rabbit, an albino rabbit even. The plus version has an extra point of magic and the ability Blizzard Boost, which ties it into its location in Arendelle. It's found at the highest point of the frozen wall area. The colours are colder, purple and blue, and now the rabbit is black. The hit visuals are very appropriate, a magical explosion that scatters some cards. But if you don't like magic tricks, how about liberating yourself with this next staff, Nirvana? Very magic focused this one, the plus version has the second highest magic staff for a staff. It's designed with a wide end featuring an ornate gold structure, housing a blue gem. Since the staff is named after a concept found in Indian religions, I assume the appearance is based on Indian designs. Answers on a postcard, please. The plus version is found in San Francisco and comes with an arrow boost and drastically different colours, red and purple with a yellow gem. I do prefer the normal version here. The effect of the Nirvana is a flower petal. It's quite pretty and vibrant. Astrolabe is next. It's more of a balanced staff, especially the plus version with its plus seven plus seven. That's a lot of pluses. We now have an ability on the regular staff, Thunder Boost, because we're into the more powerful staves now. Then the Astrolabe Plus adds full MP Blast, which increases the damage of magic by 50% at full MP. The regular one is actually the last non-synth staff on this list, and the name comes from an early astronomical instrument, a model of the universe, and it was used for calculations. The staff's design is based on the 3D version of this device, also known as an armillary sphere. It's a very cool object, and I want one now. Most of the ones I see online are brass, which match with the regular type, but the plus version is silver and purple instead. I really like this, it's probably my favourite staff in the game. Quite often, actually, Donald's staves, and magic in general, is associated with stars and the cosmos, and I just think that's neat. The Astrolabe hit effect has a translucent sphere surrounded by a ring, relating to the model the staff is based on, and the lens flare sparkles are shining stars. Perhaps my second favourite staff, though, is this, the Heartless Maul. Just look at that little guy clutching and biting the Heartless Emblem. Gotta be one of the cutest weapons. And it's a trademark pureblood design with the bat wings and horns, essentially demonic imagery, right? But the eyes are little pluses rather than the usual glowing circle. 
The Heartless Moor Plus changes the colours of the staff to red and yellow, which makes me think of some of those Final Mix recolours in the previous games, but I think both of these look good. As far as stats go, well, they share the same strength and magic, and also the ability Heartless Buster. This is a 30% damage increase to Heartless. The base version has Hyper Healing, which increases the speed of the party member's recovery after a knockout, and restores more HP when they recover. The Plus version swaps this for MP Thrift, which decreases the MP cost for everything. This is really the only ally weapon where the Plus version isn't outright better, because maybe you want Hyper Healing. In every other case, the Plus version has one more ability than the default. A very nice hit effect here, a bright yellow flare and a pink heart, with little pieces shattering off. The Plus version has opposite colours. Finally, we have the return of Save the Queen. Let's look at the stats first. At plus 9, this has the highest magic stat, with a respectable 6 strength. Both versions have Damage Siphon, which is the new name for MP Rage. Taking damage restores MP. The other abilities are MP Hastera on the default, and Hastega on Save the Queen Plus. These speed up magic restoration during MP charge by 20 and 30% respectively. These values are a lot lower than KH2's 50 and 75%, but this is balanced because KH3 also puts these abilities on some jewellery equipment, and KH2 didn't. Save the Queen is of course a returning weapon from KH1 and 2, and the appearance is more so based on KH2's iteration, with the heart, crown and wings, although toned down a bit. I also prefer the plus colour scheme this time around. Being the most magically powerful staff, they both require rare synth items, including an orichalcum. And Donald's final hit effect is simple but bold, a bright radiating circle within a circle, and small rainbows on either side. It's typical light magic. Now we move on to Goofy's shields, and I want to quickly say that this is easily my favourite set of shields of the three games. They're all very clean and attractive, although my favourite Kingdom Hearts shield will always be Frozen Pride. Let's start with Goofy's default knight's shield. It has a humble plus 4 strength. None of these shields increase magic, so instead what we have is elemental resistance. The knight's shield specialises in fire, with a 5% resistance on the default, and 20% on the plus. Uh, this pattern is the same for all the shields except for one. The knight's shield plus is obtained from that little puzzle in the secluded forge area of Olympus. You actually forge it yourself, which is pretty cool. It has abilities, in this case fire siphon and burn protection. The siphons work just like the aforementioned damage siphon, but for their specific type of damage. The protection abilities prevent the user from suffering one of Cage 3's status effects, in this case the burning effect, you know, the one where their ass catches on fire and they hop around. The design is faithful to its previous incarnations with the Mickey emblem, although the blue brightened over time. The Night Shield Plus has a nice simple recolour and matches with Donald's Major Staff Plus. This shield hits with a shiny, jagged effect, with some little sparkles flying off. Upping the strength to 5, here's the Clockwork Shield. Its elemental specialty is Aero, which means sneeze protection, and considering Goofy's very abnormal sneeze, it's a nice thing to have. The design is straightforward, a large heater shield shape with a bunch of cogs and gears attached to the front, and these are actually animated. The Clockwork Shield Plus goes for pale green and blue colours. For the hit effect we have a spinning gear encasing a bright flare, and some smaller flares flying off as usual. Here we have the Star Shield, can you figure out why it's named that? The design makes me think of Toy Story, probably because of Woody's badge, although the plus version is actually obtained from Monstropolis. I suppose it's not far off Captain America's shield either, but let's not get into that. It's a small sized shield, but I doubt that makes much of a difference in Cage 3. I prefer the plus in this instance, but that's mostly personal preference for purple, and this time the resistance is to thunder, and so you have thunder siphon and electric protection. We also saw a star themed shield in Cage 2, the falling star. The hit effect is an 8 pointed star, just like the weapon itself. Aegis shield is next, plus 7 strength, and its signature element being blizzard. It's a simple design. The lighter plus colours are perhaps more representative of Blizzard magic, but I also love that deep blue, dark cloudy centre on the default version. The concept art seems like a middle ground between the two colour schemes. Hmm. The word Aegis comes from Greek mythology, commonly referring to a shield or maybe an animal skin cloak used by Zeus and Athena. The name can also mean violent windstorm or thunderstorm, although the associated element doesn't match either of these, but you know, it's a cool word. 
Actually, it's one that's been used in Kingdom Hearts before for one of Vexen's shields in Days and the Aegis chain found in Cage 2 and 3. I really like the Aegis hit effect. It's a big shiny outline. It looks a bit nobody-esque, but I think that's just because of these kinds of spikes being used. Ah, now this is a shield after my own heart. The Storm Anchor is quite clearly water and ship themed and comes with the relevant defenses. We're at the high-end shield, so normal versions have abilities now. The Storm Anchor has Water Siphon in both cases, but Cloud Protection is only on the plus. Naturally, the plus shield comes from the Caribbean, on my favourite island, Sandbar Isle. The design is excellent, I'd say. An anchor overlaid on a ship's wheel and waves cresting around it. I also like the plus version's recolor, perhaps less consistent, but the gold anchor certainly does pop. I'm biased towards nautical themes of course, but still, it's a nice design. The hit effect is less splashy than I expected, but the shape is definitely representing the ship's wheel. The plus version has a slightly lighter blue. Now, here we have Goofy's mirror to Donald's heartless weapon. You may remember that the Nobody Guard first appeared in Cage 2 as a rare drop from Gamblers. Well, it's back again with a similar design concept, but flattened out and with more prominent diagonal spikes. Oh, and the Nobody Emblem is here in its entirety. Unlike with Heartless Maul, the Plus version is a direct upgrade, adding another point of strength and hyperhealing, which is another callback to Cage 2 as the original Nobody Guard had hyperhealing, but then Final Mix changed it to MP Rage. It's a bit strange that the abilities aren't consistent with Donald's equivalent, where he has two on each version, but oh well. Nobody Buster, of course, increases damage to nobodies by 30%. And the recolor is more of a reshade, a lighter greys. After all, it is nobody themed. Only space nobodies get to be colorful. Oh, and it's worth noting that this shield is the only one with no elemental resistance. As for the hit effect, it's a sharp, eight pointed pattern with jagged pieces flying off that remind me a little bit of the nothingness magic we've seen before. Lastly, you know what time it is time to save the king. The best strength stat, and perhaps the most useful resistance, at least I'd imagine dark damage is pretty common with all those heartless. Again, an Orichalcum will be needed to craft each of these. Cage 3 does have a dark siphon ability, but it's not on this shield, instead it matches with Save the Queen by having damage siphon. And once again, Donald gets two abilities on both weapons, but Goofy needs the plus version for that. The second ability here is Stun Protection, preventing one of the most common status effects. As far as design goes, I think this is by far the best of the three Save the Kings. It's got the hearts, crown and wings, but presented in a far more elegant way than its predecessors. Cage 1's was very flat and looked kinda arts and crafts, and with Cage 2 I found the protruding wings to be a bit much, a bit clunky. This is much better. I will say the plus version is a little worse for me, it's just a bit less consistent, although I do like the deep red heart. And of course it's a callback to Cage 2's plus version in the final mix. Save the King has yet another 8 pointed hit effect, although this is a thicker ring and short stubby diagonals, with small pieces flying off and a radiating centre. That's all of the Donald and Goofy weapons, so let's take a look at other ally weapons now. Every other character's weapon has 3 strength and 0 magic, and almost all of them are represented by this vague nebulous orb. It's a bit like the ones used in Cage 2 for Beast's Claws and others, but instead it's literally just this picture every time. This leaves us with just two actual weapons to look at. Uh, first is the returning Skill and Crossbones, Jack Sparrow's sword. It looks a lot better than it did in Cage 2, I mean you'd hope so with a 14 year gap. This is just called Pirate Sword in Japanese, the pun obviously wouldn't work in both languages. And lastly is this, Rapunzel's Frying Pan. Both her and Flynn use this in the film, but it's Flynn aka Eugene's weapon in the game. It's a skillet pan, it's pretty tarnished, you cook things in it, need I say more? There's also the various Keyblades used by party members, but I've already covered Keyblades in other videos, so we don't need to look at those. Which means we end on a frying pan, how lovely. Thanks for watching.